Welcome back to Cardanities.org. Today we're going to be looking at objections to St. Thomas Aquinas' cosmological argument for the existence of God. This is going to be part two of our series. If you haven't checked out part one, Russell's Objections, or the original cosmological argument video, you should check those out now. Like I said, we've just taken a look at Russell's objection to the cosmological argument. Next up, we're going to take a look at two objections proposed by David Hume to the cosmological argument, followed by, in our next video, an objection by Immanuel Kant. Now, of all the objections here, Hume's are arguably the least powerful and the ones that have been most commonly responded to. In this video, we're going to take a look at those objections, and then we're going to see if we can save them. So, Hume's objections are explanation of the parts is sufficient. Basically, explanation of all of the parts in the world. As long as we explain each individual part, we don't have to explain the whole. We don't have to explain the entire universe. We just need to explain each of the parts. That's sufficient for what we need. And Hume's also going to say that the causal principle what we based our argument on, that everything needs a cause or needs an explanation, is spurious, it's dubious, it's questionable, it's something we might not want in our ontology. Let's take a look at his arguments for each of these objections. So first, explanation of the parts is sufficient. What Hume's going to say is, if I have 20 balls of matter, if I explain each and every one of those balls of matter, I don't need to explain the whole 20, or some weird set of subsets of all of those 20, I don't need to explain these two and those two and these five and those three, I just need to explain each of the balls of matter on their own, and I've explained the whole set of matter. Once I've explained each ball, I need not explain the whole 20. In the same way, once I've explained every specific thing in the universe, I don't need to explain the whole universe. An explanation of the parts of the universe is sufficient to explain the whole. The problem here is that merely explaining the parts doesn't really seem satisfactory. It doesn't seem to give us all that we really want. For example, if I explained a chicken in terms of an egg, and an egg in terms of a chicken, I wouldn't have really explained anything about the whole process of chickens and eggs. I'd be using circular logic here. The only way that we seem to be able to get full explanations is by stepping back from the particulars and getting a general explanation of the whole system of chickens and eggs. If we only go by particulars, we'll end up explaining them in terms of each other, and we'll either end up with circular reasoning, such as the chicken and an egg, or an infinite regress back into chickens and eggs and so on and so forth. Similar to our child asking why over and over again. We need a full explanation of the whole system for it to really be satisfactory and to explain it to our wishes. So, the first of Hume's arguments is a little worrisome, but let's take a look at the second. The causal principle is questionable. Remember, the causal principle is all things must have a cause. Hume's argument against it is that we can conceive of things without a cause. We can imagine something that doesn't have a cause. Therefore, things without a cause are possible. It's conceivable, so it's possible. Well, if the causal principle is questionable, arguments from conceivability are also really questionable. One may conceive a logically necessary truth to be false if one doesn't completely understand that logically necessary truth. And also, logical possibility doesn't imply metaphysical possibility. Just because something is possible in logic doesn't mean it's actually possible in the actual world. So, Hume's argument is a little troublesome, but that doesn't mean the basic doubting of the causal principle is off base. Mackey tries to help Hume out by saying that the causal principle actually needs to pony up the proof for itself. It only has methodological utility and lacks ontological justification. A lot of people say that it's something that's just immediately apparent to them, but it doesn't seem to really have a strong justification for it. If you want to check out some more videos I have around this idea of the causal principle and the problem of induction and that kind of stuff, check out my playlist on skepticism versus science. Specifically, scientific instrumentalism is one of the basic ideas of how something can be useful, but not be justified. 
it seems that the causal principle may fall into this set as well. Now, Hume himself was not actually an atheist. He was a Christian. He just believed that reason shouldn't be used to try to prove God, that you should believe in God based on faith. So I'll leave you with a quote from David Hume. I think it may serve to confound those dangerous friends or disguised enemies to the Christian religion who have undertaken to defend it by the principles of human reason. Watch this video and more at carneades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.